so this lesson is going to be on graphing logarithmic functions and just to kind of get you thinking about logarithm what their logarithmic function looks like we're going to go back and review um, when we were graphing exponential functions and this is one we did back in section 4.1 um, so one thing I want you to remember is that exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. So um, f of x equals 2 to the x and f of x equals log base 2 of x are inverses. So if I want to figure out how uh, the ordered pairs on the table of values for this log graph, I'm just going to switch x and y like we do with inverses. So all of the y's, I'm going to make x's. And all of the x's are going to be the corresponding y's. All right, so then I'm going to go and graph these ordered pairs. Great, and that is going to give us the shape of our logarithmic function. All right, so that is an arrow pointing down. It's kind of hard to see because it's right beside the axis. All right, so some characteristics of the exponential function, if you guys remember um, the domain of this one and all of all exponential functions actually is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The range for this particular one was uh, the y is greater than zero or from zero to infinity. And this, exp this particular exponential function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote, but it can be shifted up or down. But this one is y equals 0 for the horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's look at our logarithmic graph and see if we can find the domain and range and if there is some sort of asymptote. <clears throat> so there is an asymptote. Um, there's, these are going to have vertical asymptotes, and so this graph is going to get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote at y, or sorry, at x equals 0, but it's not ever going to reach it, so that would make the domain be from 0 to infinity or that x is greater than 0. And then the range on this one, I have an arrow pointing down and I have an arrow pointing up, which is going to make my range be from negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Now, if you notice that the domain of the exponential matches the range of the logarithmic and the range of the exponential matches the domain of the logarithmic, and that's what happens when functions are inverses of each other. All right, and then this one has a vertical asymptote. All logarithmic functions have vertical asymptotes. They can be shifted around, but this one is the, the line y equals, oh, x equals zero, sorry, x equals zero for vertical. All right, so just to review parts of a logarithm, the y here was the exponent, b is the base, and what you're taking the logarithm of is the argument, and that's important for what we're doing today. So to find the domain of the graph, um, we talked about before when we were solving logarithmic um, equations that the argument has to be greater than zero. It can be zero and it can't be negative. So what we're gonna do to find the domain is set the argument greater, whoops, <laughs> set the argument greater than zero. 
and that'll give you your domain. And likewise, that also gives you your vertical asymptote. You just change the greater than or less than, depending on what happens with your domain, to an equal sign. Right. And then the other thing we're going to find um, while we're doing the graphs is the x-intercept. And so we all know, like every function, um, to find the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0 and then solve it for x. That will always give you your x-intercept no matter what function it is or what type. Now I want to take a second and review some reflection rules. So we need to think about that a little bit today whenever we're doing these graphs. So there's two types of reflections. There's a reflection on the x-axis and a reflection on the y-axis. So if you have a situation where you're graphing a logarithm and it's the negative log of something, that's going to be a reflection on the y, I'm sorry, the x-axis. All right, so the basic shape of a logarithmic graph is what we have right here. And so we take that shape and we reflect it on the um, x-axis. It reflects it upside down, so it's going to look something like that. Still has a vertical asymptote, but it's flipped upside down. All right, the other type of reflection is when you have the negative on the inside or the yin side, like we like to call it, and that's going to be a reflection on the y-axis. Okay, so that will take this basic shape of a logarithm and reflect it sideways, so it will be something like that. Oh, that's not great. I'll try that again. So it still has a vertical asymptote. It's just flipped to point the other direction. Okay, so now let's do some examples. So for example one, and all of our examples actually, we're going to find the domain vertical asymptote x-intercepts, and then we're going to do a little sketch. So let's start with the domain. So we just wrote in that box, to find the domain, you set the argument greater than zero. The argument in this case is x minus one. So we set that greater than zero and we'll solve it for x by adding one. That's your domain. Which makes finding the vertical asymptote really easy. You just go back and you change that inequality sign to an equal sign, and that's it for the vertical asymptote. All right, the x-intercept is probably going to be the most challenging one out of these three, but we can still do it. So we go ahead and um, make the y value 0. All right, and then this is just a little logarithmic equation like we solved previously, and this is type um, two, where we're going to raise the base or exponentiate it. All right, and in this case, our base is two. All right, so we're going to do two to the zero equals two, so log base two of x minus one. All right, everything except zero to the zero power is going to give us one. That two to the log base two is going to cancel. And so we'll just be left with the x minus 1. And then we can solve that for x by adding 1. And we're going to get that x is 2. So our x-intercept is the point to 0. Okay, so to graph these, what we're going to do is go to our vertical asymptote, which in this case is x equals 1. And we're going to draw a dashed vertical line. Okay. Then we'll go to our x-intercept that we just said was the point two zero, and we're going to put that point on our x-axis. All right. And then we did say this is all going to be graphed greater when x's are greater than one, so on the right side. 
of the vertical asymptote, which is where our x-intercept is, so that's a good sign. And this one has no reflections, so it's going to be that same basic um, logarithmic graph shape that looks like this. So that's just what we're going to draw. We're not really worrying about a whole lot of points, so you're just going to get that x-intercept. And then we're going to start off close to our vertical asymptote, curve through the x-intercept, and then over to the right. All right, so let's look at the other side. So we're going to do the same thing. You're going to start off and find the domain. So we're going to take our argument, which is 3 minus x, and we're going to say that that is greater than 0, and then we'll solve it for x. So this one is slightly more difficult because we're going to have to divide by a negative, which is going to make us change that greater than sign to a less than sign. And when that happens, it means that there's a reflection on the y-axis, and there is because it's a negative x there. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that down, that there is a reflection on the y-axis. So that means our graph, when we go to draw it, is going to look like that. Okay, then for our vertical asymptote, we're just going to go take our domain and just change the inequality sign to an equal sign. Right. And then for the x-intercept, we're going to put 0 in for y. Alright. These are all going to be uh, type 2 where we're going to raise the base. And the base in this case is going to be e. So e to the 0 is 1. That cancels out. We're left with 3 minus x. And then we will solve that by subtracting 3 and then changing the sign to 2. So again, our um, x-intercept is the point two zero. All right, so we're going to graph our vertical asymptote. We're going to graph our x-intercept, and then um, we did already say this one has a reflection on the y-axis, which is going to make everything be graphed on the left side, and it's going to be in this shape right here. So I'm going to start off close to my vertical asymptote. I'm going to curve through my x-intercept and then curve up to the left side. All right, and then for this last one, for our domain, we're going to take what's in the, or the argument, it's in the parentheses, and we're going to say it's greater than zero, and um, we, are, we have to divide by a negative, and so we do change that to less than, which is should trigger something in our brain that tells us that this one has a reflection on the y-axis. which is going to change the shape to that shape. Okay, our vertical asymptote, just change inequality sign to equals. All right, and then our x-intercept. We have kind of a lot going on on this problem, um, but we can do it, it's fine. So um, this one is going to be type um, 2 at some point, but right now we got a bunch of stuff going on, so we need to isolate the logarithm by first subtracting 2. And then dividing by 6. All 
All right. So now I'm ready to raise the base, and our base this time is 27, which is kind of weird, but that's okay. Okay, so we need to figure out what 27 to the negative one-third is. So... Um, to raise something to a negative, we're going to do the reciprocal. So 1 over 27 to the positive 1 third, right? And we'll come back to that in a second. All right, over here, that is going to cancel. So we're just left with negative x. All right, so start thinking about what it means to raise something to the 1 third. And that means the cube root. And so the cube root of 27 is 3. So that would be 1 third. And that's what negative x is. So that would mean positive x is negative 1 third. So that makes our x-intercepts be negative 1 third, 0. Well, that was quite a bit of work to get to that point, but it's okay. All right, so we're going to go to our graph, and we are going to graph the vertical asymptote as 0. We are going to put a point at negative 1 third on the x-axis. And then to do our graph, we're going to start off very, very close to the x-intercept, and then we're going to curve through and make it in the shape that we make it whenever there is a reflection on the y-axis. All right, so that's it for the lesson. Your assignment is to do these four problems. They're doing the exact same thing that we did in the notes.